Welcome back to Home Theater Gurus. This is episode 19. After the video that we did on reading the specifications for your equipment, I had a request to do one on determining how much you could put on a breaker or one circuit, you know, with the power consumption of all the equipment, how do you calculate that and just determine if you're overloading your system. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Now, before we get into the actual calculations on our equipment, there's a few things you need to know about your power panel and your breakers and how that's sized. You know, you're going to have 15 amp and 20 amp breakers usually, you know, in modern homes today. You're not going to have anything less than that. You shouldn't see anything like a 10 amp. You know, it should be 15 amps and usually 15 amps are going to handle your lighting circuits, especially on newer houses and your outlets will be on 20 amp circuits. Now that's not always going to be true, but that's, you know, a general rule, especially with newer houses. Lights don't draw nearly as much of a load as what people plug into outlets. Now one thing you can't do is just go in your breaker panel and say you've got a 15 amp breaker and you want it to be a 20 amp or whatever, you know, wherever that circuit's going. You can't just go throw a 20 amp breaker in there. And the reason is because of the wire between point A and point B. A 15 amp breaker is going to have 14 gauge wire running through your walls, you know, probably to lighting circuits. It could be going to outlets too, but you're restricted by the size of that wire. That 15 amp breaker protects too much load from being placed on that wire. So if you get any more than 15 amps, now of course it's not like a, as soon as 15 amps gets on it, it's going to blow. It may take a couple seconds. You know, it's kind of like a, like a slow reacting, it has to heat up basically. There's an element inside the breaker and if it gets, you know, as loads being applied on it, it's kind of like a toaster oven, you know, the wires get hot. The same thing's happening in that breaker and heat is what's eventually going to make it trip. So a 15 amp breaker is protecting the wire. And if you've got 12 gauge wire running through the wall between point A and point B, then that's going to be a require a 20 amp breaker. A 20 amp breaker is what protects 12 gauge wire. So you can't just go and change breakers out in the breaker panel because you're restricted by the wire size, the wire gauge that's running between point A and point B. So if you wanted a 20 amp circuit and you've got a 14 amp breaker, or I'm sorry, a 15 amp breaker in there, you would have to actually either confirm, you know, you could have a 12 gauge wire that normally has a 20 amp breaker. Someone just put a 15 amp on there. You know, there's nothing wrong with that, you know, but you have to confirm before you put a larger size breaker that you know, the wire in the wall is rated for that breaker and that breaker is going to protect it properly. You don't want to burn your house down. So now that we've got that covered, I mean, that's not very complicated. Let's go ahead and look at how we can calculate how much of a load we're going to apply to a circuit. And to do that, we're going to use something called Watt's Law. Everyone's heard of Ohm's Law. You know, this is Watt's Law. And I know what you're thinking. When I was in school, you know, this stuff made my brain hurt. I was never going to use it. And a lot of us think that I'm never going to use this stuff in life. And a lot of us don't, but there are a few things that are handy. And this is one of them. Just a quick little formula. So Watt's law says that Watts are equal to volts times amps. Now in a home, you know, in the U S you know, we're going to have 120 volts. So this V is going to be 120. So all we need to do is find out, you know, we need the amps. So if the amps are not, you know, in our specifications for our equipment, that's where we're going to look, you know, usually they'll give us watts. So if we have watts and we already know a voltage, we can find amps pretty easy. So let's take a look. Here's some pictures I'm fixing to show you of the back of my gear. So here's my Marantz. This is 7,009 and the Marantz says it draws 710 watts. Okay. So we've got 710. All right, so we need to get the, the A by itself. We need the amps. So all we have to do is we have to divide both sides by 120. So it's going to be 710 divided by 120 is going to give us our amps. So we can get our calculator out. 720 divided by 120, 6 amps. All right, so that equals 6. So our receiver, or our 7009, draws 6 amps. Now if we're on a 20 amp circuit, we know that we have 20 amps sitting there that we can possibly, you know, load that circuit down. That's our max that we can pull on it before we start tripping breakers. So we have, what, 14 amps left. 
keep in mind sometimes they do kind of exaggerate especially you know receivers and i mean everyone's known for over exaggerating like the watts you know you'll have a receiver that says it puts out 5,000 gigawatts or some stupid crap like that you know it's just for sales you know but you have to remember that that doesn't tell you that it's what distortion it's at so you have to ignore that we have to look at the power consumption so you'll go into your manual or you'll look at your you know, the back of your equipment, it's going to be somewhere around the plug, you know, your power plug. It should have a consumption, power consumption. Everything should have that. It's either going to be in watts or it's going to be in amps. If it's in amps, of course, it's, we don't have to calculate anything. We just deduct it from what our specific run, you know, our 20 amp circuit can handle. If it's in watts, we just have to calculate it out. Now, instead of going through all this, you know, if it gives us in watts, just divide the watts by 120 and that's going to be the amps. You don't have to actually do all this like we did here. I mean, that's what you're doing, but it's just easier. You know, if it's 1,200 watts divided by 120, it's 10 amps, okay? And every 120 watts, you know, divide that by 120 volts is one amp. So a 60 watt light bulb is half of 120, right? So that's half an amp. So there's really not too much thinking in it if you look at it like that. Just remember, divide your watts by 120, that's your amps. Now, if you're overseas or somewhere where you're using like a different voltage, say 240, you just divide your watts by 240. Okay, so... I have a 20 amp circuit and so far we have six amps on it right for my AVR. Let's go ahead and look at my seven channel amp. I have an Emotiva A700. Now it says a thousand watts max. Let's take a thousand watts and 1000 divided by 120. That's 8.3 amps. Let's go ahead and round up. Let's say 8.5. All right, so what is that? That's 14.5 amps. Okay, so if we had a 15 amp circuit, that's pretty much all we want to put on there is, you know, our A700 amp, which is not a huge amp by any means. It doesn't put out a lot per channel because I don't need a lot. But, uh, you know, that, that and the receiver, that's pretty much going to load down a 15 amp circuit to its max or as much as we want to put on it. If we try to put some more, you know, we may run into some problems. Now, of course, we can put like an Xbox or a DVD player. That's not going to be much. Now, you also have to keep in mind these are going to be max specs, what you're looking at when you look at your power consumption, or they should be if the manufacturer is rating them properly. So you have to kind of keep that in mind. My Emotiva, I'm probably not really putting more than a couple amps you know I mean it's rated at what was 8.5 amps I may be a quarter of the power is all I'm really pulling probably because I barely drive that thing so you have to keep that in mind too but it's always good to size everything for the max just because you don't want to run into problems where you're you know stressing your system or you're getting close to tripping a breaker but if you like to really crank it, it's not a bad idea to just use these max power consumptions. You know, our amperage that we're going to find, use that, deduct it from your, you know, your total amperage that you can have and just kind of stick with that. Now, Blu-ray players and like an Xbox, something like that, they're not going to draw much. I mean, the Xbox, I had to look it up online, but supposedly during gaming, you know, that stresses a little more than just watching a movie. It's 50 watts, so it's roughly half an amp. So that's not much. I mean, you could throw that, you know, if we had a 15 amp breaker right here, Sure, you can put that on the same circuit. I mean, you have to remember that these specs, you know, what we're pulling on our receiver and on our amplifier, that's going to be at max output when you're really, you know, pushing these things to the max, which most of us are not going to do. But, you know, just kind of keep in mind where those maxes are. So you have an idea if you're getting close to the maxes, you don't want to put anything else large on that circuit. Like you wouldn't want to put another amplifier you know, if you're already at 14.5 amps and you've got a 15 amp breaker, don't put anything big on it. That's done. You know, a subwoofer, no. Find another circuit to plug it into. I wouldn't plug it into this one. Okay, so I also have a Behringer NU4 6000 up there. So it says 620 watts, which that doesn't sound quite right. You know, if we say 620 divided by 120, that's 5.16, say 5.2 amps. You know, I'm not sure I buy that that's only going to pull 5 amps because that's basically two 3,000 units. Now, I know it only has one power supply, but it's a 4-channel amp, and it puts out some juice. So, you can go and find bench test for all this equipment, or pretty much, you know, any really good AVR is going to be bench tested. Any popular amp is going to be bench tested. So, it's kind of a pain, but sometimes when something looks too good to be true, you can go look it up. 
and supposedly on the back of the Behringer there's a 12 amp breaker now you see the little breaker I mean in my picture right here you can see it does it's not labeled supposedly that's a 12 amp breaker at 120 volts and it during bench testing it has tripped only under very very strenuous conditions where they're trying to find out what this amp can do so for something like that I would probably say I wouldn't put more than two of those on a 20 amp circuit just because I know that I'm not really going to trust what the manual says just because there's bench test information out there that kind of disagrees with it a little bit and like I said if it sounds too good to be true it probably is in my case you know that amp right there I still barely push it I've got my 418s in here I mean the clip lights the little lights barely even jump up and down because I don't listen that loud everything is corner loaded I've got so much output it's you know it helps the amp out a lot it's not really having to work so you have to keep that in mind too just make an educated decision and of course if you do overload your amp or you overload your circuit your breaker is going to trip or it should trip they do fail so you know if you've got a buttload of crap on that you know your breakers and it's not tripping you might want to look at it you know you start suspecting it you know it should be it shouldn't like what i'm doing to it i'm you know especially if you're cranking it and you've got say you've got you know a couple inukes on there that are really pumping the juice and you're hitting your little clip lights i mean you're working it pretty hard just understand that breakers do fail it doesn't happen very often but they can you can get a clamp on amp meter you know pretty cheap from like harbor freight or something like that now i'm not saying that are the most accurate in the world but you can use something like that to get an idea of what you're pulling if you know you don't trust what you're seeing in the manufacturer's specs another thing i want to say about receivers a lot of times people will look at the power consumption say the power consumption says like 700 or 800 watts on the receiver and they're like oh that's you know it's a seven channel receiver so that's 100 watts that it can output to your speakers no it does not mean that at all it has nothing i mean it has something to do with it because it's still a load that that's going to pull from the wall and the higher that is you know the more powerful amp you know amps you're going to have on board it's it is a sign of you know a good healthy output on your receiver but it's not directly comparable because you have what's called a transformer and a transformer does just that it takes voltage in which is 120 volts and it changes the voltage and you know we're not going to get into ohm's law or anything like that but when you change voltage you change everything okay here we can calculate everything quickly because the voltage it stays the same but when you change you know you start getting resistance like you know different ohm loads you're changing voltage in a transformer you know that's why you cannot use the wattage that it pulls as you know watts per channel and you know that's that is completely false information don't use it for that and look guys if you're running a projector it's a good idea to keep that projector you know off the same circuit as your speakers especially your subs and the reason is because when you're really pushing your system especially subs you're putting you know a draw or a, a heavy load on that circuit you know at one moment you may barely have any load at all in the circuit then something happens and all of a sudden you know 15 amps get loaded onto that circuit you know you're gonna see something like that through lights and your projector is basically a light there's a ballast in there that you know basically powers the light in your projector and you will see flickering if you have it on the same circuit so you don't want to do that you know if you can help it at all so it's going to be a really good idea to keep it separated on a different circuit a lot of times houses will have one circuit for the outlets and another circuit for the lights if you can tap into where the lights are at that's awesome even older houses you know where say there's a 15 amp breaker for the light circuit you know and it was sized accordingly back when it was built nowadays everyone's using leds and fluorescent lamps so the draw on that circuit is a fraction of what it used to be because we're no longer using 60 watts or 100 watt you know incandescent lamps we're using leds that only draw you know 10 watts 7 watts something like that so there's a ton of load that we can stick up there and not have any problems at all so you may want to calculate out your lights and see how many you got on that circuit and you're probably going to find out you're barely even using it so you know you can go and find the run from the electrical panel that feeds that circuit or feeds those lights and you can tap into it and put an outlet right above your projector in the ceiling run your wire up through the ceiling plug it in and you're good to go now you're no longer on the same circuit as your speakers and you don't have to worry about that flickering when the action hits now i do want to emphasize if you're not comfortable 
with you know electrical work yourself there's there's nothing at all wrong with that because it's very dangerous if you don't know what you're doing i mean sure you can turn the breaker off and you've killed the power to the you know to that circuit so you can work on it safely but still if you're not comfortable with it it's only a few hundred dollars you know or it should only be a few hundred dollars to go up there and add an outlet if they charge you more than that or they you know the bids higher than that get some more bids because that's not a lot of work to do something like that shouldn't cost you but a few hundred bucks and you know if you're not comfortable with something like that don't try it it's not worth it it's not worth you getting hurt all right guys so that's going to be it for this episode do not forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything coming up the next episode we're going to start getting into room acoustics and why we need them and we're going to go over the different types of room acoustic you know different types of panels and we're going to get into how to manipulate our room reflections for the best experience and the best sound don't forget to look down there in the description for this episode's cool gadget and that's going to be it for this one guys i'll see y'all next time